Efter ett långt arbetsliv är det många som ser fram emot pensionen. Att få ägna sig åt sina intressen medan hälsan tillåter, kanske umgås med barnbarnen. Men hur blir det i framtiden? Kan barn som föds idag räkna med samma levnadsstandard på ålderns höst? Till den typen av frågor ekonomen Johanna Valenius ägnar en stor del av sin tid åt. You pay into the system as a worker with a certain expectation, but right now I think uh, with population aging um, and a lot of governments having to, to, to do something in order to keep the system solvent, the question then becomes, do you raise the minimum retirement age or do you uh, cut the generosity of benefits? So it's not obvious that people can expect to have the same benefit in the future that current, current retirees are, are enjoying. När vi arbetar betalar vi skatt. Och en del av den skatten används till just pension. Men eftersom vi föder färre barn och lever allt längre uppstår på sikt en obalans. Ett komplicerat problem som sysselsätter forskare världen över. This is of key importance for, for most most countries and this is also going to be an issue in the US and, and Japan for instance has has a rapidly aging population so really it affects most of the western world and this is where you know we as economists and academics should should weigh into the discussion and try to affect good policy as opposed to uninformed uh, you know panicking <laughs> as it were Det är på gymnasiet som Johanna Valenius kommer under fund med att det är just ekonom hon vill bli. When I was in high school I read, I read a book by John Maynard Keynes um, and he described you know, uh, the requirements of an econo- uh, economist and he said you have to be a mathematician, a statesman, a philosopher, a historian, you know, with the brashness of youth. So I thought wow, well this, <laughs> this could be me, right? Efter fyra år på högskola i hemstaden Helsingfors och doktorandstudier vid Arizona State University hamnar hon så småningom i Stockholm. Och sen sex år tillbaka arbetar hon här på Handelshögskolan som docent. Most of the faculty is here on the eighth floor, but some of us are also on, on the seventh floor, and then the PhD students are spread out a little bit. This is kind of our communal coffee area, which is a really nice feature, I think, in, in Scandinavia, that you have places to, to congregate. So we have a weekly fika. You know how important fika is in Sweden. The work week is often filled with a lot of um, interaction with, with other people. Of course, part of the year I teach, and so I, so I interact with students. This is Max, my other, other postdoc. Hi, here we are, as promised. <laughs> Så vad är det då Johanna och hennes team försöker åstadkomma? Jo, det handlar faktiskt om inget mindre än att se in i framtiden. Eller rättare sagt, att beskriva flera möjliga framtidsscenarier. Något som kräver att man hanterar och analyserar enorma mängder information. För att lyckas med det tar man hjälp av datorer. Computers can be very helpful in simulating the behavior of individuals. So then you have, you know, you have a lot of variables and long time horizons, and uh, and then um, the computers uh, help you tackle the question numerically that you you, you just can't solve uh, analytically on on pen and paper. Med hjälp av statistik skapar man alltså först en modell av samhället eller systemet man vill studera. När man väl byggt upp en beskrivning av verkligheten i datorn justerar man utvalda parametrar för att undersöka vilka konsekvenser förändringarna för med sig. With these computer aided models you can kind of without having to implement all sorts of things and conclude, you know, 10 years or 30 years down the road that it, it was a bad idea, it didn't have the intended consequence. We could already hopefully uh, be able to tell you that this will work and this won't or or, or something like that. But, um, The goal is that whatever we uncover could be used to affect uh, affect policy. Uh, if we stumble on something good, it it should should have an impact, not uh, and not just be of academic curiosity. 
Så vad har då Johanna och hennes kollegor kommit fram till? Hur ska vi få fler att arbeta mer? The key thing is to provide incentives for for people to to want to remain remain employed. Certainly another thing is allowing people to collect benefits and continue working. Uh, can be a good way to to keep people employed and still paying paying taxes and paying into the system. There's a lot of of positives potentially associated with, with immigration and it can and it can solve some of the um, employment shortages in in some countries for sure. You know, uh, with with an aging society, there's going to be certain types of of, of jobs that we're going to need more of. You know, like home health care workers, and I think immigrant workers can can help help ease that burden. I Johannas andra hemland Sverige genomförde man en stor pensionsreform i mitten av 90-talet. En reform som hon naturligtvis har granskat i sina datasimuleringar. Och det ser lovande ut. So, but this reform was implemented, you know, with great hopes, but very little formal analysis, as far as we could tell. So we wanted to kind of do a more formal analysis and, and see what would happen. And we find that that it looks good. I mean, it has a lot. It's, our model predicts a lot, a lot of the intended consequences, namely that the the average retirement age should should definitely increase by more than two years, is is what we're we're, we're predicting. So. Ja, exakt hur det blir i framtiden vet vi förstås inte. Men med kunskap så ökar i alla fall chansen för att de barn som föds idag kan få ut en dräglig pension när det är deras tur. <skratt>